Now I'm going to place the true bacterial gasket right here in this position. As you can see, you will have to align it. It's not hard to do that. And now I'm going to connect the turbo actuator to the plug. And now with my laptop, I'm gonna go to the Cummins Inside software. I'm going to turn the ignition on. And I'm going to go to connect. We go here, connect. Now we go to ECN diagnostic test, which is this one right here. And double click on electronic actuator installation and calibration. And we have this message. This message is telling you then um, if for some reason you do this in a, in a proper way, you can damage some component of the turbocharger. So we go OK. And now we go here and we say install actuator, click on it, see it says then the uh, turbo actuator must be removed from the turbo charger before proceeding with the install. So we say OK because it's already removed and we go here. In this section over here and we do, we do a star and it says all the information like again then it has to be completely removed uh, so everything with everything okay we hit okay and it's going to do the process right now it passes if for some reason the turbo actuator is failing, it's gonna say here it failed. So now, really quick, we're gonna go and we're gonna install the turbo. All we have to do to install this turbo is to align it with the gasket, place it on top in the proper position like this, and insert the bolts very carefully. Try to align it very carefully with the lever over there. If you do it in a wrong uh, way, you can damage something. So just align it very carefully align it with the bolts and then install the bolts and tighten okay with the turbo actuator on place and all the bolts on place I'm gonna tighten with a 5 millimeter allen, allen socket I'm gonna tighten very well and with the turbo actuator completely installed I'm gonna go and do here a, cali a calibration caliber actuator say ok it has to be mounted as it says so we go star and we say then it has to be mounted okay it's already mounted we say okay so the calibration passes that means then the actuator is in a good condition and the calibration and the installation of the actuator was successfully done on this engine uh, so now I just need to exit the software and continue the installation of the turbo charger on the truck. The Twitter installation was successfully done, so that means then everything can uh, be installed now. So if for example you do the Twitter installation and calibration and for any reason doesn't pass, you will need to remove the Twitter again and uh, replace it with a new one. And if you already replace the turbo actuator with a new one and still the turbo actuator and calibration doesn't pass, that means that there is something wrong with the turbo. Um, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to tell you that in case you are trying uh, many times after uh, replacing the turbo and still you don't get the uh, calibration. So now I'm going to install all the hoses, these pipes. Um, just align it over here and install the uh, ball then holds it. I'm gonna do the same from the rear one. Uh, the kit, the turbo actuator kit comes with the new seals for that. So here are the seals. And I'm going to need the seal for this one so I have an extra seal for that one and some extra for this one. So 
gonna need to get some extra seals from these uh, pipes over here, these hoses, just to prevent any leaks. You can install the same ones, that's no problem if you don't have access to the new ones at the moment, but installing new ones will prevent any unwanted leaks. So now I'm going to put everything back together. Okay, all the turbo, all the turbo actuator coolant pipes are on place. Everything looks alright. So now just do a double check to make sure that everything is on place. Um, so now I'm just gonna connect the sensor. This is, this is the turbo speed sensor and the turbo temperature sensor, which is this one here. I'm gonna put it back. And I'm gonna put the plugs back and I'm gonna secure all the cables. And there is one thing that you have to make sure. Then is the position of the turbo inlet housing. You have to make sure that it is in the correct position. In this, so the position on this truck uh, of the turbo housing, it goes up. This piece is supposed to be facing up. So I'm going to lose this clamp using a 11 millimeter. In some cases you can find a 10 millimeter ball over here, not. So I'm gonna lose it. And then I'm gonna turn the position um, uh, where uh, it's supposed to be. So it will vary depending on the trucks, depending on the uh, brand of the truck model applications. They have many different positions. So, okay, all the sensors are in place and the cables are tight and secure. Be sure to do that and uh, double check. Then everything is in the correct position. Nothing uh, in, a, in a proper position because it can wear and it can cause damage to the electric ton ele electronic components of the engine. So the housing is still loose as you can see. I haven't tightened the clamp is still loose because I need to find the exact position for the CAC pipe over here. So uh, before doing that I'm gonna install the inlet pipe that once uh, comes from the air filter right here. So I'm gonna install it. Freeze. Okay, the turbo inlet pipe is on place. Um, you see it's loose, the clamp is loose. I won't tighten it until I put the uh, CAC inlet pipe over here. So uh, you see I'm able to move it still. So now I'm going to install the CAC pipe. Like this, as you can see now it's completely aligned. So now I can tie this clamp. I can use the 11 millimeter socket to tie this clamp. And then I'm gonna tie this other clamp, this clamp, the other clamp on the air filter housing, and the CAC clamp over here. Okay, everything is on place, everything is tight and secure. All the clamps are on place, they're tight, double check. All these clamps, specifically this one, if you remove it, if you uh, get it loose to move the housing, uh, double check that it's tight because this is a very important clamp. If this is loose, you not you are going to damage your turbo charger. Um, so everything looks on place. Always double check. That's the most important step then uh, you have to do at every job. Um, so um, now I'm going to add the coolant to the engine and I'm going to start the engine. With the engine running, I just gonna inspect for leaks around the area. Coolant leaks and oil leaks. Everything looks fine. There is no leaks. Now you can hear there is no noise coming from the turbo, which means that everything is all right. So the last thing to do on the engine is to hit the gas and inspect for the turbo noise. You can hear the whistling. You can hear the whistling of the turbo. Uh, if you have a turbo gauge, it will be easier seeing the gauge moving up and down. But in this case, this truck doesn't have a turbo gauge. Um, and as, as you can see, the region is required, so I need to do the region after uh, the engine warms up. So, um, pretty much, this is all I'm going to be showing you about the turbo charger replacement when I come inside a sex engine. This turbo charger replacement will be similar to all Cummins ISX engines from 2008 and up. 
Even the newer Cummins ISX engines are going to be similar. As you can see, I need to add water, so I'm going to go outside and add some water. And the Trupo Octavio replacement is going to be similar as well. Um, well, uh, that be all that I'm going to be showing you. I mean, th there is no much to show you. The only thing I'm going to tell you is the engines from 2008 from 2000, uh, to 2011, they have different type of nuts holding the turbo. There are 18 millimeter nuts. But the process of removing them and uh, replacing the turbo is similar. Uh, for different trucks, in this case, this is a Peterbilt. Uh, but for Volvos and other uh, brands and models and application of trucks, it's going to be easier or more difficult to remove the turbocharger. If you have any questions about this video, just comment below and I will try to answer as soon as I can. If you have any comments, suggestions or uh, any recommendations for this video too, you can do it. You can comment below and, and share your opinions and everything you, have, you want to add to this video. Um, if you want to send some support to my channel, you can check the video description below for details how to send support to my channel. Um, so I can continue making videos like this, helpful videos for everybody, because I am helping different kind of people, drivers, uh, owner operators, mechanics, technicians, and people that just want to know. So like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.